and remind you just like Paul. Paul said that day is coming. Dead in Christ going to rise first. Then we who are alive and remain going to be caught up together in the clouds with them, all of us. Rapture. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but that's what he's describing. We got it. We understand. We're going to be translated. This uh, mortal will put on immortality. We'll be changed and transformed in the blinking of an eye. Uh, as quick as you can blink, uh, uh, it's, it's always amusing to me the pictures that artists have painted of the rapture and you see these fully clothed bodies going off to heaven. I, I don't know if that's the way it's going to be. I don't think so. And I don't mind telling you why. This mortal will put on immortality as quick as your eye blinks. Some, some people will say, don't you think that the minute the rapture takes place and everybody disappears, don't you think that that will cause everybody on earth to know they've missed the rapture and, and they're going to be sorry? But I don't think the scripture indicates that's the way it's going to be at all. I, I think this mortal doesn't go to heaven. I think that this uh, body goes back to the dust from whence it came. I think this cotton that I'm wearing, and the, uh, I guess it's all cotton. I don't know what I'm wearing. I think this cotton and, and fake leather and elastic I think all of this stuff stays right here, which means that maybe the artists have it wrong. Maybe what they ought to draw is a whole lot of people suddenly dying and falling on the ground and an invisible spirit going back to God who gave it. The body goes back to the dust from which it came. There is no reason to assume that the dead in Christ are going to come out in bodies because the body goes back to the ground that it came from. The spirit goes to God, Ecclesiastes, who gave it. That's going to be the same transformation that takes place with us living beings. The body goes back to the ground, falls, clothing stays. An invisible spirit goes to the God who gave it. The world will just think another pandemic hit us and everybody died. If, in fact, there are that many people left. One verse actually ask, will he find faith when he come? At the rate the world is going now and the decline of morality that we're seeing already, abortion and uh, immorality abundant, uh, uh, kidnapping and murder, it's just the mayhem is unbelievable sometimes when you just watch one evening's news. Imagine how much worse the world will be. Imagine what our learning institutions, our schools and colleges, if they're already mocking and degrading Bibles and people who believe in them. Imagine what another 200 years might be like. Look at the brief age of America. Will it even exist in 200 years? Is America the mystery Babylon of Revelation? Will America be destroyed in the space of one hour and the smoke of her destruction be seen by all the other nations who were made rich by that, whatever mystery Babylon is, America fits the description of her wonderfully. She has made all other nations rich. And so her merchandise has been lavish and wonderful and so on and so forth. So just imagine and pretend for a moment that it's possible that America won't even be in existence 200 years from now. And then there's a reason for a verse that asks, will he find faith when he comes? And let's just say that the professing church of right now, already on the verge of dropping below the 50% mark for the first time in America's history. 50% meaning the number of people that actually claim they go to church, let alone be Christian. And our numbers continue to decline, churches folding and closing, continuing uh, a decline, already happening in Europe and happening now in America in pretty alarming numbers. And so I don't know that the world will even notice the departure of a handful of dead people who still have faith and are still clinging to him. Remember Jesus, another uh, eschatology of Jesus, he said, in the last days it will be like it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Interesting that Christ should choose that for a description of the last days because that description tells us a couple of things. One, homosexuality, immorality will be rampant and abundant because in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah it does not say a lot of the men of the city came and surrounded Lot's house. The Bible literally says all the men of the city came and surrounded Lot's house. That tells us that just Lot and his family were the only ones who were not surrounding his house. And two angels in there 
simply there to rescue him. So that analogy alone says that the Christian believer will be hugely outnumbered by the immoral crowd in the last days. But it also gives us hope that when that day comes, that godliness is overwhelmed by ungodliness, morality overwhelmed by immorality, it also gives us that, that wonderful promise, don't worry, even if God has to grab you by the hand of an angel and get you out, God will rescue you and make a way of escape for those who believe. And so when the rapture comes, I don't know what it'll be like. I'm just suggesting that it may not be like some of the artists have painted and some of the authors have written. It may just be that these bodies suddenly stop and the invisible spirit that God breathed into us, that breath of life goes to God who gave it. And so shall we ever be with the Lord in the air, in that breath, that mysterious spirit that is God. Mm -hmm.